H.H. H. Holmes, the most phenomenal killer in U.S. history. There are a lot of stories about H.H. H. Holmes. He's been nicknamed the Devil of Chicago, and that about summarizes the kind of human he was. It was possibly certain that such an atrocious life as he'd gone through would get summed up in a legend and myth. In Holmes' case, lots of stories focused on his mythos are mainly fantasies and only created by creative minds. They were fabricated by reporters at the time and also by later writers. But what's the true story behind this phenomenal killer? Sit back and enjoy the show as we narrate the mystery he continued to manifest up until now. Before we go any further, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and smash that like button for more quality videos you can't certainly get from others. We compile videos and do the research just for you. On May 16, 1861, Somewhere in the town of Gilmanton, New Hampshire, Herman Webster Mudgett was brought into existence. He is also known as Dr. Henry Howard Holmes, or H.H. H. Holmes. This individual is considered as one of the most vicious serial killers in the American history. In spite of the imaginative tales of animal torture linked to him, his mother later revealed that her son was once an animal lover. He especially loved dogs. The Murders Holmes slaughtered unaware visitors who booked themselves into homestay at the Chicago Guest House, clueless of the fact that they had entered the mansion of a bloodthirsty maniac. The building was a horrendous maze of unknown paths and death rooms, specially engineered for murdering, tormenting, and disposing of bodies. The serial killer owned the hotel, which spanned nearly three lock. No one knew the entire design but himself as he continued hiring and firing engineers and architects. Holmes would watch his visitors through small holes before breaking into their chambers and killing them in different disgusting ways. Burned alive. Most of the rooms were soundproofed, so he could slaughter his guests room by room without interrupting the others. There was a hidden hanging chamber and even blow torches in the barriers to annihilate victims as they were in deep slumber. Some rooms were filled with gas. Jets hook up to a tank in the basement so they could be smothered by it as he continued to watch. If they opened the doors to escape, he would be notified by an alarm system. Other than this, there was also a vault where he could keep the victims and engulf them with acid. Pretty brilliant of a murderer, wasn't he? The entire house had greased chutes leading to the secret room where he could use to place the bodies or push the living. It was beneath here that he carried out a few of his monstrous acts. Tortured and dissected. The nightmarish basement had a medieval style agonizing rack which he could use to stretch them up until their bones pop out of their sockets. He was a professional chemist and pharmacist, but he also had a dissection table and surgical equipment to take away the flesh from their bones and engrave their insides. But he didn't do this only because it was his passion, but for business purposes too. He would morph the leftover bones into skeleton models and later negotiate to medical schools to sell them, along with other internal organs and body parts. Some parts could be sold, so he either just dissolved them in acid vats or buried them in lime pits. If anyone questioned him about the guest, he could just say they had already checked out. He's believed to have butchered not less than 200 people between 1891 and 1894. When he was spotted and arrested, he confessed to being an evil mass killer and conceded to 27 murders, even though the true figure is fathomed to be much, much higher. He is filmed as stating, I was born with the devil in me. I could not help the fact that I was a murderer. No more than poet can help the inspiration to sing. I was born with the evil one standing as my sponsor beside the bed where I was ushered into the world and he has been with me since. He was executed by hanging at Philadelphia's Moyamensing Prison on May 7, 1896. Witnesses revealed that he maintained his cool composure to the very end, even jesting the executioner to be gentle and patient in killing him. It took him 15 minutes to take his demise, twitching repeatedly as he choked to death before he was declared dead as reported by the New York Times. Since this day, some experts have claimed affirmed that he could have been Jack the Ripper, taking out the notorious Whitechapel killings during a visit to England. It's curious that many of us find the man who killed and tortured many lives 
so terribly fascinating. Perhaps the reason we have fought over each of his confession is because comprehending this human is probably the closest we'll ever have to understanding the demon within him. One thing is certain, the memory of this murderer is forever embedded in the annals of humanity as the man who stooped down as America's first serial killer. Quite gruesome, isn't it? Which part of his history amazed or disgusted you? Comment your thoughts down below. We would like to know your conclusions. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up so we can upload related videos. If you're an abundant true serial crime stan, remain seated as the next video is starting.